All right, today I'm gonna to run through the uh, exact steps I'll be used to mount a scope on a brand new rifle. Uh, Neville here in the office just got his new uh, 300 Win Mag Browning Hell's Canyon Long Range McMillan rifle in. We're gonna set up for a third season hunt we got coming up in a couple weeks here. So it's gonna basically unbox everything and uh, show you step by step how I mount it from the Picatinny rail, um, scope rings, and how I get the scope level. So just pick this, pick this up. All, everything's all still in the box. You have all these cool instructions, don't need those. And here's his gun, his bolt. And always, anytime you work with your gun, this goes without saying, but just make sure the gun's unloaded. Obviously, it's a brand new gun. Bolt is out, so we are totally safe. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do in this gun, it does come included um, with the 20 MOA Picatinny rail but I'm not sure how it's mounted on there or anything like that. And so I'm gonna actually remove the Picatinny rail and then uh, reapply it. And then I'm gonna put some uh, blue Loctite on the Picatinny rail. There's a lot of other ways you can mount a Picatinny rail. Uh, I mean, I could bed it and stuff like that. But for this video, we're just not gonna bed it. We're just gonna use uh, the blue Loctite and call that good. So get rid of all these, uh, these screws. The browning, nice part about it, does come with um, four front and four rear screws. Just gonna loosen all these up. And they actually are coming out pretty easy, so it's a good thing we're taking this apart. All right, now I have the Picatinny rail removed. I'm gonna take this off, and I'm just gonna actually clean it really quick. I just have an old towel here. There's a little bit of oils on there. And then what I'm gonna do is take the blue Loctite. I do not use red on any of the stuff actually just in case you want to take stuff off in the future so I use blue loctite and we're just going to just rail back on and do note since i took it off there is a higher side and lower side in this so the higher um, side needs to go in the rear and then just apply a little bit of blue loctite in each screw and thread her back on And right now I'm just going to slightly thread them in and then I'm going to use the fat wrench to actually get the inch pounds for how much we're gonna to torque that on there. And whenever you're working on anything on a rifle, it's always good to, once you actually get these tight, to go diagonally through them. Like basically just make sure um, everything's tightened on there evenly and it's not going kitty wampus one way or other. Cause if you tighten all the right side and then tighten the left, you're gonna have a gap on the left side. So you kind of want to Go diagonally when you're applying everything to torque specs. All right, now next, I'm gonna take the fat wrench. I got these all slightly tightened in there with the blue Loctite. I'm gonna use the torque wrench and we're gonna set this to 30 inch pounds. And every different rifle manufacturer is different on what they recommend for applying your uh, either scope rings right to it or Picatinny rail in this case. Unfortunately, right now, I don't have all of my uh, rifle tools with me. I noticed that the uh, correct size for these screws is not long enough right now to get through the Picatinny rail. Uh, I don't know if I borrowed that off to a friend or what, so I'm just gonna hand tighten these, what I've done in the past, still works really well. I'm still not trying to over tighten them. While I'm tightening these, I am going to that cross pattern, so I'm going diagonally across the screws. Right. Once you get all the screws tightened down with the blue Loctite, a lot of times I like to take a rag and just run on the sides in case you get some blue Loctite leaking off and going on the action of your gun. All right, this next part now, I'm gonna to start to uh, just place in the lower rings on here. And we're using Seekins uh, Precision. These are 30 millimeter rings, and these are the uh, medium height. So what I like to do with this stuff is just get these mocked on here roughly and then we're gonna put the scope on top of it to see uh, what our scope release is going to be and see how these fit on here before we actually lock them down on the bottom of the, the scope. Just take these top halves off. So what I like to do, I just took the top half off these scope rings and instead of just taking this and willy-nilly throwing it around, 
They're kind of machined, what I believe is to fit a certain way on here, even though they're both flat and you can flip it around. So Seekins logo, um, how I can read it, I'm gonna make sure I take this off and I'm going to set it off to the side just like it is right now so I know exactly where it's gonna go later. This is gonna be my, fr my front and then my rear, even though they're all the same, but the tops could be machined slightly different. And also the great thing about having an actual gun vise like this, I can take all my screws and place them in individual trays so I know where everything's gonna go for each um, part. Instead of dropping them, let them go on the floor, you lose them. Some of these parts are pretty small. Again, I'm taking this top off. This is gonna be the rear side, so I'm gonna put this on the rear portion, exactly how I would put it back on top later. All right, and for this gun, that was gonna be running the Leopold um, DX3i LRP eight and a half, 25 by 50. And so we'll take this out of the box. And now I'm just gonna basically mock this up on here while giving it good spacing and try to figure out where we're gonna put this. And what I like to do when I mock this up is I like to try to figure out the spacing and try to keep these as far out as I can to give it a little better surface area, but still keeping in mind his uh, eye relief adjustment. So it'll still give me some eye adjustment moving it back in a little bit and then also keeping forward. And then another thing I like to do too is to make sure the spacing in the middle of these is correct because he could be adding a uh, scope level on the front or the back here. You just wanna leave enough room to mount scope level at a later date, or you could actually do that right now if you had one. We're just gonna keep that off for a bit. And then what we should do is, you always do like the eye relief at max power, because most of the time we're gonna be shooting. And I'm going to just mock this up really quick and put these back screws in, this, in there, and then lift the gun up and hold to my shoulder to get the eye relief. Because otherwise I might have to go back and move these forward or backwards, depending on how far I can move it. And while I'm mocking this up, I'm only gonna use one screw because I have to take these back out and put Loctite on them, Loctite on them after the fact. All right, so I'm gonna pick the gun up and put it to my shoulder, get this correct eye relief set up. And I have it set at max power right now, which is 25 power on the Leopold scope and try to jerk anything around. And I'm looking forward, basically, I'm gonna close my eyes and open them and try to make sure I have all the, the reticle info because I don't want that black ring on the outside. And it needs to come back a little bit. And probably just a little bit more. We should be good. Okay, now that I know where my rings are in the correct spot, I really should be good when I put that on there. I still have that space if I want to put a scope level in there. All that's dialed. So now I'm going to take off, or I'm going to just keep that on. I'm going to add a blue Loctite on the end of these um, lower rings and then tighten those guys on there. And these are going to go 55 inch pounds on the Picatinny rail. So big difference from where the rail was mounted to the gun. And then one thing to keep in mind when you're putting these uh, scope rings for the Picatinny rail, I like to always uh, push them forward when I attach it. That way the recoil of the gun, everything comes back. It's not gonna slam in the back and, and torque things. So they have a little bit of play in them so you can slide them forward a little bit and then just crank them down. Again, just I'm gonna do it really lightly right now. Take the other one out, put blue Loctite on, and uh, then we'll get them torqued in there. And now I'm setting blue Loctite on the second screw. Now I'm moving on to front lower scope mount.
Again, I'm pushing forward pressure on it. And then finally adding blue Loctite to the last screw. Okay, now I'm gonna take the fat wrench again and we're gonna crank it up to 55 pounds. Um, a lot of ranges in this because it's 50 to 55. Sometimes I'm gonna go on the heavier side. And that's a click that lets you know you have successfully cranked it to 55. All right, now that the lower base is completed, I'm gonna actually lock this in the vise and uh, get the gun level. And then we're gonna work on uh, lapping the tops or the whole set of rings and then mounting the scope. And for whatever reason, I still like to get the gun completely level um, this way, as best I can, instead of having a steep downward angle, this kind of helps hold everything in place. So I'm gonna take an old t-shirt or if you have a gun vise with a bunch more adjustability, you could use that. I'm just gonna give a base here. That's good enough. And this is the part you really wanna pay attention to. So we're gonna try to level this off these top of the rings. You can also level it off the Picatinny rail. So we want everything to be true in the gun and based off of this level in the plane. There's another cool product too that I actually don't have here with me today because I borrowed it off to a friend, but it's called the uh, Arisaka, I can never pronounce that. Uh, it's a little uh, angled leveling device where basically you're gonna level off the bottom of the rifle scope. Because if you put this up on top here, we'll show you later on, and then let's say I have the gun perfect level right now and I'm gonna level this to this on top of the turret cap. A lot of times turret caps aren't perfectly flush and level. So if you rotate your turret cap, measure it again, it might be a little different. Turn the turret cap again, do the same thing. It could be a little off. So what I recently learned about that, and uh, I started now leveling all the scopes from the bottom. But today, like most people will just do, we'll measure, we'll level it from the top of the turret cap. But just something to keep in mind, there's other tools out there that are available, available to level it from the bottom. Cause this is completely flush. And so just a perfect thing to uh, level off of on the bottom of your scope. So I quickly touched on the leveling process of kind of how you're supposed to do it. Lock it in place, level it off the top here. The little levels let off the Picatinny rail. But before we really get into totally locking this down and making sure it's level, I'm going to uh, lape the top of the um, rifle scope rings. A lot of people say it's an unnecessary step because these are machined with very high tolerances, but I just like to remove any imperfections from machining process and I feel like it can't hurt anything. So I will always just you know geek out and go to the laping process. What this involves is just a big uh, steel rod that's 30 millimeters. We're gonna put a little bit of this laping compound, 220 grit, on top of here, I'm just gonna put this inside here and put the top rings back on, screw them down, and then slowly start tightening them up and rotate this back and forth. And it's gonna slowly uh, get rid of all the imperfections off the bottom and the top of the rings. So what we do here is just take a little bit of this compound and I just use my fingers. Not sure if that's the safest thing to do, but it's just compound, so it works. I'm not gonna do anything with my hands. You don't need to use a lot of it. A little goes a long ways. It's basically just adding kind of, you know, sandpapery grit to this device. I'm gonna set it on there. And again, I've still kept these in the same position as, as before. This is forward on it, and this is my rear one, and this is my front one. So I'm gonna set those on there because I wanna try to make it perfect on the front and the back. Again, even though I'm not fully tightening this onto a rifle scope, I'm still gonna use that diagonal um, 
attachment to the screws here. Just take it slow to keep it even, just like I was gonna put it on my rifle scope. That way when I'm doing the laping process, it will make it a little more precise. All right, now I'm just basically gonna use a forward, backwards motion, side to side, and just basically rough the inside of the surface of the uh, scope rings. And throughout this process, you're going to continually tighten down your rings. As you can see, this process definitely takes some time to do. So we just finished lapping the scope ring. So as you can see, it's kind of a tedious process. It takes some time to do. And not a lot of times it works out actually that easy where the first process was done, but I did go for, I don't know what that was, 10 some minutes. Um, I'm just cleaning off all the remaining material that might be on there. On both the top and bottom ring. And now what's next is to do our final uh, leveling of the gun, locking it in the vise, and then attaching the uh, level actually out on the end of the barrel for our reference. So we'll go through that right now. I'm trying to check it in a few different reference places on the gun because we don't have that other tool like I was talking about before that I like to use. Okay, we're good there. Now I'm going to add this uh, Wheeler barrel level. What I'd like to do here too is to open up the uh, actual reference part of the server where you can fine tune your level once you get locked on there to match this. And then once we match it, we don't really need this anymore until we put the top part of the, the turret on the gun. Again, it's always good to just tighten both of these evenly as you go. I'm just gonna tighten as tight as I can go. I'm gonna make sure everything is still level in the gun. Okay, I got the level there, and now I'm gonna fine tune the top of the wheeler barrel level by adjusting this knob, and that's gonna bring the level down or up. Okay, now I have both my uh, scope level on the Picatinny rail. It's still level on the rings because they're all both the same, same plane. And I got the level out on the barrel all dialed, so I actually can move this. And now I'm gonna set the scope back on top, the lower rails. And now I get to remember where you had it before in the eye relief test when I picked the gun up to my shoulder and looked through it. Um, I remember it was an eighth inch off the front for the perfect eye relief. Another, another thing you could do, that's why I have the pen in my hand, the marker. You could take a little bit of marker since this is going to be covered up by the top ring. You could make a little mark a reference on the front and back of the rings so you know where to put it for later on. But it was really easy measurement on the front because it's just an eighth inch right there. And this is where we're going to be leveling off the top of the turret cap. And like I mentioned before, there is that other tool that you could use to um, level from the bottom because that's a nice flat surface and you don't know um, if this is actually, you know, sometimes not, might not be perfectly level. All right, now that we have everything level um, on the gun, I'm gonna go ahead and add the top rings onto the scope. Just gonna add the top rings on there and grab them exactly how I had them on the table, front on both of them so they're not mismatched because I lapped them this way. I don't wanna then flip the top of the ring around and put it on there like that. I wanna keep everything the same. 
And then during this step, again, we're gonna add on to some blue Loctite to all the screws. Just going to barely tighten them. Again, go even and do the whole diagonal pattern on here to make sure you keep the gap on the rings the same. Um, tighten one side all the way, it's gonna be tightened all the way over here and pinch, and this side, it's gonna be a lot of gap that could cause your scope to uh, torque. For now, I'm just trying to visualize the, uh, the gap I have on both the right and left side to make sure that's slightly even before I start doing anything further. You still wanna keep these slightly loose so you can move your scope back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and lock tighten all the screws for the front. Again, just the same as the back rings. You wanna make sure you do this evenly. You want even gaps on both the right and left of the scope rings. Okay, now I have both the front and rear scope rings um, full of Loctite, and they're still slightly loose enough where I can rotate the scope back and forth. Right now I'm gonna put the level on here and slowly tighten these down as I make sure the scope is level. I'm still looking out here too at my reference. This is my reference level on the end of the barrel. So that's still level, so I didn't bump the gun vise at all. That's a really good thing to keep in mind as you're doing this. And the great thing about these scopes, you can use a tool to pound on the parallax or the windage adjustment just to make things get back in the center. That little bumping is not gonna affect your scope at all because the recoil of the gun is a lot more, a lot more recoil than that uh, marker. Again, I'm just making sure these are still level here and it's still level out there as I slightly, slowly tighten these up. So keeping with that diagonal um, pattern as you tighten these two. And for these ones, after I finished just getting them in place, I'm gonna take the uh, fat wrench again. And for these top rings, I'm gonna be doing 25 inch pounds. Reason why I do it slowly with this little tool instead of jumping right into the fat wrench is the fat wrench, if I try to crank it down to 25 right now, it'll probably torque it. All right, so now I gotta back back down to 25 inch pounds. I'm still level in both spots. Okay, we're still level. It's a good sign. Again, cross pattern. And there you have it. I have a level on top of the reddit, on top of the uh, turret. Still level on the end of the barrel. We have a perfectly level scope. We're ready to rock for uh, Neville's Colorado third season hunt coming up in two weeks. So yeah, it's a lot of little uh, steps along the way, but I think a lot of these steps are gonna greatly, you know, help you out with accuracy. Just keeping everything true in your gun, mixing things a lot better downrange later on. Um, the only thing I might do now is uh, take it outside, hang a plumb bob, um, aim at the reticle from 30 yards, trying to line up, make sure everything's still lined up in the reticle on the plumb bob. And then can also do some uh, tall target tests too, which we can uh, go over at a later date when we have some more uh, uh, sunlight outside. So, anywho, yeah. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. As always, um, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, really appreciate that to keep you updated on all the videos we're doing. Um, comment below if you have any questions. Um, happy you enjoy the video and best luck this season.